This is a chest, and usually you could craft one in about 20 seconds in any brand new Minecraft world. But in this mod, you'll have to spend over 30 hours to make one, creating a windmill for power, a saw for cutting wood, and even a wolf farm for their dung in the process. Sounds easy enough though, right? Well, welcome to Better Than Wolves, the hardest Minecraft mod ever created. This mod basically takes all of the easy and relaxing parts of Minecraft and turns them into brutally slow and often deadly grinds, which to most sane people probably just sounds terrible and unfun. But I'm kind of addicted to doing terrible and unfun grinds, so I'm gonna conquer this mod no matter how long it takes. And so far after roughly 20 hours of gameplay, I live in this dirt bunker, have no armor, and am at constant risk of dying to starvation. But I do have this pair of shears which give me the ability to castrate creepers, so that's pretty cool, I guess. Today though, I'm gonna be solving a bunch of these issues with my four big goals for this video. First is to get just any set of armor so that I don't die as easily. Second is to create some type of animal farm that will give me a sustainable food source. Third is to make a windmill which will generate power so that I can actually start using some of the tech in this mod. And my fourth and final goal is of course the big one, to craft a chest. And so to get started, I first just need to go ahead and make a little extension to my base over by this body of water here. All right, and now that I've got some cobblestone walls set up here, I just need to add a layer of wood slabs to the top to prevent mobs from spawning. Okay, and I have now created this ugly monstrosity here. But that's totally okay, because if this mod has taught me anything, it's that functionality is much more important than aesthetics. But now, of course, the question I'm sure you're all asking is, why did I need this extension to my base anyways? And the reason I needed this is because in order to eventually make the windmill and craft that chest, I need to go ahead and set up a farm for a crop called hemp right now. Of course though, in order to make a farm, I'm actually gonna need some seeds to plant. And the only way to get these hemp seeds is as a very rare drop from digging up grass with an iron hoe. So I'm gonna need to do a little bit of that. All that grass there, and that was enough for a total of nine hemp seeds. But honestly, that's fine. That's enough for us to at least get started here. So what I have to do is just till that a second time, and it'll turn it into farmland, and then I can actually get the hemp planted down here. And there we go. My first nine hemp seeds are planted down. Of course, though, I don't call this the hardest Minecraft mod for no reason, so this stuff is gonna take forever to grow. It has literally nine individual stages of growth, before it's ready to be harvested. So that's why I wanted to get these things planted down immediately so that I can actually work on some other stuff in the meantime, instead of just staring at these for like the next eight hours. And the first thing I decided to do was just go out and explore a little bit more because the constant risk of starvation had kind of prevented me from doing too much of that up until this point. And while I was out on this journey, I actually discovered that me unlocking planks in the last episode meant that I was now able to craft boats. So traveling across water was actually feasible now. We have a boat. I didn't even know I could make this. Oh my god, this feels so advanced! <laughs> Unfortunately, my excitement didn't last too long because I quickly realized that I had completely lost track of time and was now stuck in the middle of nowhere as it turned to night. And considering that I still did not have a single piece of armor, this was not exactly a great situation to be in. Thankfully, that boat I had just crafted came in very handy, and I was able to use it to escape from the horde of mobs that was chasing me. But then I had a run-in with a mob that I had been fortunate enough to avoid for my first 20 hours of playtime. Oh my god, get away! Ah! No! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, no! This is a nightmare, this is a nightmare. Wait, I need my boat. Oh my god, it let me get let go of me. Stay back, stay back, squid, stay back, stay back. Oh my god, oh my god, okay. Wait, I, I wanna pick up, no, oh no, not again, oh my god. Yeah, in this mod, even the squids turn into demonic killers once the sun sets. Thankfully, my iron sword did enough damage to get rid of them very, very quickly, but an encounter like that in the early game would have been enough to kill me. Which, speaking of dying, this is probably a good time to give anyone a refresher who's a bit confused as to why I'm so scared of dying if this isn't even a hardcore world. And that's because in this mod, even the normal worlds are basically hardcore worlds, because if you die, you randomly respawn in a 2500 by 2500 area 
area around spawn. So dying would basically mean starting from scratch all over again and completely erasing that 20 hours of progress I had already made. As I was attempting to make my escape into this nearby desert village though, I spotted what was essentially the equivalent of the jackpot in this mod. A zombie decked out in full iron armor. Which would usually just sound very scary, but one of the few things that this mod actually makes easier than vanilla Minecraft is that zombies are guaranteed to drop any tool or armor piece that they're wearing. So if I could manage to kill this thing, I was about to get rewarded big time. Oh my god, it's, it's coming to me too. Oh wait, I didn't even realize it's like, it's like gloom in here. Okay, we're okay, we're okay for now. I'm gonna break these bottom blocks here, and I'm gonna try and kill it from the safety of this little village home here because getting this thing to drop a piece of iron armor for me would be so oh my god wait get this one out of here i gotta go grab that oh my goodness oh my goodness now i have really hard decisions about what to drop. like i'm dropping the planks though and i suppose mysterious gland i don't know what you're used for you're getting dropped as well oh my god oh my god three pieces of iron armor is insane that is actually insane. And after that extremely eventful night, the sun had finally risen, so I could safely make my way back to my base. And after making it back to the base, I decided this was a good opportunity to do a bit of caving, because now that I had access to the nether, I could use a combination of netherrack and campfires to make permanent light sources, which would make exploring these caves so much easier. Obviously, getting these things set up was still a bit of a tedious process, but I had a lot of progress I was gonna have to make in this mod before I'd get access to permanent torches. So for now, this was the best I was gonna do. Also, I guess that that iron zombie I killed had some family members that weren't too happy about it because one day during this whole caving process, I was just hanging out in my bunker and suddenly I was attacked by this guy. Oh my God. Oh my god, that thing hit me with the iron sword and did so much damage. Oh my god. Bro, that thing did like six and a half hearts with one hit of that iron sword. That could have ended so tragically. Oh my god. And now I'm sure what you're all wondering is why the heck was I not wearing the three pieces of iron armor I had just dropped? And well, the reason for that is because in this mod, each piece of armor adds weight to your character. And the more weight you have on, the faster you deplete hunger. And as you can probably imagine, iron armor adds a lot of weight. And so until I had a more sustainable food source, I really just couldn't afford to wear it. After I was finished mining though, I made my way over to check on my hemp plants because it had now been about two hours since I initially planted the seeds. And luckily enough, one of the plants had finally grown and I got my first piece of hemp. But I was unfortunately going to need about 25 more of these before it had any use to me. And now what you also might notice is that even though I planted 9 seeds, there's only like 5 hemp crops still standing. And that's because this mod has added another feature to make my life miserable, which is the ability for weeds to grow on the crops. And basically, if the weeds stay there long enough without you breaking them, then the crop just dies. So that's what happened to the other four crops. Anyways though, after all this adventuring, I was once again running extremely low on my food supply. So if I wanted to avoid starvation, it was time for another hunting trip. But because animals don't respawn in this mod, I had already depleted a lot of the areas around my base, and so finding food this time was not easy. And after nearly a full day of searching, I just barely found some sheep in time before I completely ran out of food. So at this point, it was clear that I needed to get that sustainable food source set up as fast as possible. But as I was trudging my way through the desert back to my base, I must have started hallucinating because out of nowhere, the sponsor of today's video suddenly appeared. War Thunder is an epic free-to-play multiplayer action game featuring intense ground, air, and naval combat available on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Mac. The game allows you to play any way you want, whether you prefer blowing up your enemies on the front lines in a tank, soaring through the skies in helicopters and fighter planes, or taking to the sea to annihilate opposing warships. 
They're also constantly improving their graphics, physics, and sound. So every element in War Thunder is super detailed, allowing you to get fully immersed in the game's battles as you blow up everything in sight, sending debris flying in all directions. And as you level up, you'll unlock a ton of new improvements and customization options for your vehicles, allowing you to personalize your equipment exactly as you want to. And War Thunder is also releasing the brand new Alpha Strike update, which not only significantly improves the in-game visual effects, but also adds a ton of new content with the addition of Hungarian aviation, a plethora of new equipment, and the North Holland map featuring intense tank and aviation battles. So you can download War Thunder completely for free using my link in the description and all new players or those who haven't played War Thunder for six months will receive a week rental of some exclusive vehicles, 100,000 Silver Lions, three free premium vehicles, and a bunch of other free stuff. Big thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back into it. And after safely making it back to my base, it was time to start working on that sustainable food source, which based on some advice I had received from a very experienced player of the mod, my best bet was to go for an item called Chowder. In order to unlock the ability to craft Chowder though, I would need to complete a three-stage plan and step one of that plan was to somehow get a cow back to my base so that I could farm it for milk. So to start, I began setting up a basic pen where I could keep the cow, but of course this mod doesn't like to make anything easy, so if I wanted my future cow to survive, this pen needed to meet a few basic requirements. First, since this mod has a feature that makes zombies want to kill any cow they encounter, I had to make sure that my pen was fully closed off from any potential outside attacks. Second, since this mod also has a feature that causes cows to slowly die over time if they don't have enough grass to feed on, I had to also ensure that the pen was big enough so that my cow wouldn't just run out of food. And finally, I needed to place two redstone blocks inside the pen because these would act as permanent light sources to keep zombies from spawning inside the pen while also not burning the cow like my nether rack and campfire strategy would. And with the pen completed, all that was left to do was to actually get a cow in it. Which you might be thinking was going to end up being the difficult part of this, but it was actually the easiest. Because since I very first started playing this world, I intentionally did not go on any hunting trips to the north of my base. Which meant that all of the animals in that area would still be there. So I only had to walk about 100 blocks north of my base before I found a cow that I was able to lure all the way back to my pen. I, I'm honestly in shock that I was able to walk over there and get a cow this easily. I was expecting this to be some insane trek. I cannot lie. Now we just break one of those. Oh, oh my god, he got scared of me breaking the block. Are you kidding me? Please don't stay scared. Please don't stay scared. Please calm down. You can trust me. You can trust me, I promise. Oh my god, thank- Okay. <laughs> he trusts me again. I- I thought I screwed up my entire relationship with this cow by uh, breaking that block. My life flashed from my eyes. I was like, I do not, I did not see any other cows in that area. Let's get him nice and tidy and boom. There we go. Now he can panic by me place another one. He's in. He is in the pen. Let's go. And that officially completed step one of my plan to get a sustainable food source. And it was now time to move on to step two, which was simply to get a bunch of fish. But you see, to put it plainly, fishing in this mod usually just sucks because the rates are super nerfed from vanilla Minecraft. But every eighth night during the full moon, the fishing rates are eight times their usual amount. And so by taking advantage of these nights, I could in theory catch enough fish to last me until the next full moon and basically create a supply of never ending fish to be used for the chowder. And after looking at a chart of the different moon phases on the Minecraft wiki, I thought that this moon meant that the next night was going to be a full moon. But after heading to a nearby body of water that was large enough to fish in and getting all set up for a full night of full moon fishing, I realized that the full moon had actually already happened two nights ago. So it looked like step two of the plan was gonna have to be put on a temporary hold. It wasn't all bad though, because in the morning, as I was heading back to my base, I actually managed to find a second cow and lured it all the way back to the pen. Two cows! <laughs> we have two cows! I actually did it! Yay! I love you guys. All right, well, Project um, Fishing Hut was a complete and utter failure, but Project Getting Cows was not a failure. 
So that's always exciting. And in the meantime, while I waited for the next full moon, I decided to shift my focus over to a different goal of getting a pet wolf because I was eventually going to need a certain item that only they can produce. But before heading out on a search to find one, I realized that I had gone through all the work of getting these cows for milk, but I had actually yet to milk either of them. Let me quickly run over to my workbench, craft this bucket here. And then I just want to see here if it just works like regular vanilla Minecraft. Like, can I just right click on this guy and oh, oh yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. We got some milk. Wait, and look at that. The udders change based on when they're ready to be milked. Look, this one I just milked has very small udders. And the one I haven't milked yet has uh, very obviously enlarged udders. <laughs> that's, um, that's maybe a bit too much. I don't know if I wanted to see all that, but uh, good information to have in the brain, maybe? I'm, I'm not so sure. I don't know. <laughs> and now that I had more knowledge about the biology of my two cows than I think I honestly ever needed to, I set out on my journey to find a pet wolf. I'm pretty sure though, if I have the moon phases down correctly now, which... It's definitely possible that I don't. Obviously, I was way off on when the full moon was. But anyways, I think I figured it out now. And I think this upcoming night is going to be the gloom night where it's like completely pitch dark outside. So with that being said, I do need to keep track of where the sun is in the sky and make sure that I leave myself enough time to get back home. Or otherwise, I'm going to be put in a very deadly situation again like I was in the last video. As I continued to make my way through the forest, I didn't spot any wolves. But I did spot a cow up ahead in the distance and thought this was a great opportunity to work towards some leather armor. Now, in my last video, I completely avoided killing any cows because in this mod, they fight back and can actually kill you pretty quickly. But since that video, I've learned a little trick from some expert players of this mod that makes them a lot less dangerous. So I'll actually take my grass here to lure it over. We don't need to fully lure it into the hole then, then I can just push it into the hole, all right? Then we take the dirt here, all right? Start blocking it off. Then you may hear some noises of the cow not having the most fun time in the world. That's okay, it's just part of the process. But then once the noises have subsided, just make a little hole there and boom, three leather, three raw beef, got everything I needed from the cow and I didn't even have to get kicked in the face in order to get it. So yeah, that is a very helpful trick there, obviously. I then continued to search the forest for a wolf, but didn't have any luck finding one. Although on the bright side, I did manage to find quite a few more cows and use that new trick I learned to trap them and get a bunch more leather. But as I was making my way back towards my base, I realized that the sun had started to set. It's actually getting like way uncomfortably late. I'm gonna have my campfire and flint and steel ready to go. And then as if I wasn't already in a super dangerous situation, it suddenly started to rain, which made this gloom night about 20 times more dangerous. Wait, if it's gloom night, this is actually so bad because the rain will put out my campfire. And I, there is no way I can make it back in time before it hits. Well, I guess we are about to find out whether or not it is gloom night. I was wrong about the full moon timing before. Surely I miscalculated the gloom night moon as well, right? Oh, nope. It is definitely gloom night. All right. Come on. Okay, there we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is, this is really bad. This is really, really bad. Oh no. And wait, and this is going to light the trees on fire. Oh my gosh, wait, do I have like, I need to make some sort of covering for this. I don't want to use all my rocks. I'll use like half of them. <gasps> oh no. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, wait, it's going to put my campfire out, is it not? Oh, this is so bad. How are we going to survive this? <gasps> it's out. Wait, I guess the fire will leave this lit up for a little bit before it burns out. This is so bad. Why did it decide to rain on a gloom night? This is literally the worst thing that could happen. Okay, I'm gonna have another campfire ready to go, I guess. This is like the actual worst case scenario. I need this tree to stay on fire. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. Oh no, I just died of this thing, don't I? Oh. I'm like... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, with half a heart. Hey, before I get lit on fire. Before I get lit on fire from this thing. Oh my god. Half a heart. Okay, wait, I need to actually like stay away from this tree though. I don't know what we're gonna do here. Um, 
I'm literally crippled now. I do not know how I survived that spider encounter. That is actually crazy. I just assumed for sure I was dead. I actually just thought I was dead. I have been so lucky up until this point with this mod, but I literally do not know if it would be physically possible to get more unlucky than being stuck outside on a gloom night where it's raining. <laughs> like, like, how could this possibly get any worse? <laughs> you know what? Maybe I shouldn't even say that because I'm sure the game will find some way to make this worse. Oh my god. I don't even know if you guys can see that, but there is like four sets of red spider eyes off in that direction over there. I'm slowly but surely healing my HP back though. That's good in case we do get into another fight here. Oh, all right, we have to be getting close to the end of the night. I feel like I've been out here for like 20 minutes at this point. Oh, the sun's coming up. Oh my god. Oh wait, and there's a wolf right there that we can tame. Oh my god, we survived it. We survived it. Okay, let me see if I can tame this wolf and get home. Please? Come on, wolf. Come on. How many bones is this? Oh my god, it took nine bones. Okay, will he follow? Hello? Is he okay? Why is he like, why is his texture all bugged out like that? Is it because he, oh, is it because he's wet from the rain? Will he follow me? Oh, he is following me. Oh my god, let's go, okay. Oh my god, we survived the gloom night and I got a pet wolf. Oh wait, okay, this is probably stupid. Any sane person at this point would probably just be happy that they survived and make their way home, but I am not. I see another cow here. I'm gonna take the opportunity to push it in the hole and get myself some more leather. I'm sorry, but if there's one thing I've learned from playing this mod, it's that when an opportunity presents itself, you have got to take advantage. I can just get the cow in the hole, please. Why is this impossible? I did it so easily the first time and now I just literally cannot do it. It. Oh my gosh. Okay, there we go. Holy, that took forever. That actually took me like two minutes to get it in there. <gasps> my gosh. All right, there we go. Some more raw beef and we're up to 10 leather. That's pretty good. All right, I am done being greedy now though. <gasps> Let's get me and my wolf home. I don't want him to die, so I'm gonna block him. I'm gonna block him in like that. This might look a bit inhumane, but I swear it's not, okay? My wolf pet is very, very happy here. And now I don't think I've explained it up until this point, but the reason I need this wolf is for its poop. And obviously that's a statement that needs a bit more explanation, but I'm not gonna give it to you right now, right? If you wanna know exactly why I need this thing's poop, then um, you're just gonna have to wait around and find out. And with my goal of getting a wolf now complete, it was almost time to return to fishing, but I still had a couple of nights before the full moon. And since I had already collected enough leather to craft two pieces of armor, I decided to set out in the morning to see if I could kill enough cows to complete the full set. Oh my God, I have hit the mother load again. Okay, let's get my trap set up here and let's lure all of these guys over. Oh my goodness. <gasps> four of them oh my gosh there's a fourth one over here holy i have the whole herd here oh are they starting to bounce out now because there's too many in there we can start with three for now that's okay that's a good start that is a that's a disturbing noise all right there we go though boom only five leather from three of them that seems kind of underwhelming i'm not gonna lie after stumbling upon my next herd of cows though, I had the sudden realization that I had been making a crucial error with this pro strategy I was using. Wait, this is how I should have been doing it the whole time. When you have a block on that side over there, then they are forced to fall into the hole. By setting it up the way I was before, no wonder it's so much harder to do. Okay, this is actually like the meta way of doing it. I I'm just a moron. All right, surely more than three, right? Oh, okay, there we go. I got, oh my gosh. 14? I got so much that time. I got eight from those three. Well, that is all I need then. That is enough leather. That was very easy to do. So now I can create these last two pieces of leather armor I need, starting with the chest plate and then the boots. And boom, there we go. Full leather armor acquired. I think that's my first goal for this video that I have now checked off the list. There we go. 25 hours into my playthrough of this mod and I finally have three and a half armor bars. I feel like this is a pretty good opportunity to say if you guys are enjoying watching me suffer in this mod, consider hitting subscribe. It makes the pain hurt just a little bit less. All right, and it's finally almost time to make another attempt at full moon fishing. But first I was curious as to why my wolf hadn't produced any poop yet. So I did a little bit of research on the wiki and it turns out that these guys need at least a three by three area in order to, you know, do their business. So I guess I'm just gonna convert like one of these little rooms I have in my staircase here into a poop room for this wolf. If he'll go ahead and follow me over here. Do I need to like push him? Come on, man. Oh my God, this AI is terrible. <laughs> Please, okay, wait, oh, oh, where's it going? Please, 
Bro, <laughs> oh my god, there we go, okay. All right, so now we'll sit him in here, but the wiki that I read also said it's best for it to be in darkness as well, so I'm gonna block him off in there. We are definitely back to inhumane <laughs> forms of, uh of housing for my wolf here, but um, you know, I'm just doing whatever it takes to get this thing to poop at this point. These new housing arrangements worked very well though, because only a few minutes later, I went back in to check on my wolf and found myself a little surprise. Oh, he pooped, oh my God. Let's go, my first piece of dung. Thank you very much, Mr. Wolf. I appreciate that, let's go. I have never been so excited to pick up a piece of poop in my entire life. Now, do I have somewhere I can store this poop or... Nope, I do not. All right, guess we are going to be carrying the poop with us for now. And I'm sure that this is once again making a bunch of you question why exactly I need wolf dung in this mod, but I'm going to continue to gatekeep that information for now. So if you guys want to find out, you're just going to have to wait. But now at long last, it was finally time to make another attempt at full moon fishing. This time though, I was also going to need to find a new spot to fish at because I did some research in between my attempts and found out that you want at least a five by five by five cube of water to fish in in order to be able to like actually reliably catch fish there. Thankfully, when I went exploring that one day to find myself a pet wolf, I did notice that there's a deep kind of like lake slash river area in the forest here that I think should be perfect for this. Yes, perfect right here. Yeah, wait, actually the uh, burnt trees from where I survived that insane gloom night on half a heart are actually like the perfect marker for where this little fishing station is gonna be. So that's perfect. Okay, and the sun is setting. I'm not sure when exactly it becomes considered night. I'm just gonna start fishing as soon as I don't see the sun anymore and hope that works out. The night didn't get off to too great of a start though when these squids decided to come introduce themselves to me. Oh my, oh my God. Oh no, wait, my thing was still not high enough up. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, wait. I'm oh my God. Oh my gosh. Holy, okay, well, I guess I need to make my thing even a little bit higher up. Not a great start to my night of fishing. All right, it is the full moon though. Let's not let that ruin my experience and let's start fishing here. And let me tell you guys, those 8x fishing rates were no joke because in the span of just this one night, I managed to catch 29 fish. And I actually would have been able to catch even more than that, but my fishing rod broke after the 29th fish. So I had to call it quits there. But with that, I now definitely had a big stockpile of fish ready to go, which meant that step two of the sustainable food source plan was completed. And it was now time to move on to the final step of the plan, crafting an item called the cauldron, which would not only enable me to be able to combine the milk and fish into chowder, but would also unlock a ton of other important crafting recipes later in the mod. Unfortunately though, when I returned back to my base, I was greeted with some bad news when I found that only one of my two cows was still alive. And now at the time, I had assumed that this was just some kind of bug and my second cow despawned when I left the chunk. But later on in the video, I actually end up discovering that there is a huge flaw with my current design of the pen here. And I'm interested to see if you guys can figure it out. So if you think you know what it is, leave a comment down below right now and you can see if you're right later in this video. Anyways though, the crafting recipe for this cauldron is relatively simple and just requires seven iron ingots, a bone, and a water bucket. Of course, the one problem here is that getting seven iron ingots in this mod is easier said than done because not only does one iron ore only smelt into one iron nugget, meaning I would actually need 63 pieces of iron to make this thing, plus another seven for the bucket, but each iron also takes 20 minutes to smelt and that requires a full wooden log to do. So overall, it's just a very time consuming process. If I wanted to progress in this mod though, it had to be done. So over the course of the next three hours, basically all I did was mine and smelt iron. This actually took so long that another full moon came around in the process, which allowed me to double my current stockpile of fish. So. At least I wouldn't be running out of fish anytime soon. Eventually though, I had all the materials I needed and could finally craft this thing. And boom, 
We have finally made a cauldron. Let's go. All right, now I'll head down into the room I was setting up for this thing. And so the cauldron just needs to be placed right here. And then hopefully it doesn't have gravity. If it does, okay, perfect, it doesn't. So this is gonna work how I thought it was going to. So now we mine that block there and fill all that with netherrack. And then I need nine campfires for all this netherrack here. So let's go ahead and make those really quickly. So there we go, nine campfires here. And then I need a fire starter, which hopefully this torch is still lit. Oh my gosh, at the very end, can I make it in time? Can I make it before the torch goes out and light all nine of these campfires? Oh my god, just in time. This thing is gonna go out any second. All right, but I think this should work now. And of course, the food item I'm trying to make is chowder here, which requires two bowls, a cooked fish, and a bucket of milk. So let's grab all of those items and try this out. All right, the moment of truth. Here we go. Two bowls, cooked fish, and milk. It looks like it's cooking. And... There we go. We get two chowder and I get the bucket back as well, which is obviously huge. If I didn't, that would be uh, kind of terrible. And if I'm not mistaken, this chowder should be as good as steak here and regenerate my two and a half bars of hunger that I'm missing right now. Yep, there we go. Oh my god. I finally have a good source of food after only like 30 hours of gameplay. And of course, my cow here should be ready to be milked again. Yep, there we go. And so I can go ahead and take this bucket of milk and another cooked fish and make myself some more chowder. Let's go though. Wow, that took so long to get that set up, but I think it is gonna be well worth it. Food has just been such a massive issue since I very first started playing this mod even. So to have even a little bit of relief in that department is huge. I did quickly realize though that there was a bit of an imbalance between the like 50 fish I had in comparison to how fast my one cow could produce milk. So I went out adventuring the next day and found another cow to bring back to the pen to try and even things out a bit. I also changed the height of my fences to be too high instead of just one, but you'll soon see that this also didn't fix my issue of cows dying. So if that was your guess as well, you unfortunately were incorrect. But now that I was able to craft chowder, that completed my second big goal for this video of getting a sustainable food source. And it was now time to turn my focus towards getting that windmill. In order to create a windmill though, there are a lot of other items I need to craft and processes I need to go through. And so first thing I need to do is collect 10 of these stone bricks here. And then I craft a millstone as well as another item to go along with that called the hand crank. But now you might be asking, what exactly is this millstone for? Well, all of this hemp that I have been farming up since the very beginning of this video, this is the key to crafting the windmill. Because in order to craft the windmill, I need to collect 108 hemp fibers. And the way I get hemp fibers is by taking the hemp here, putting it into the millstone, and then manually processing it down with the hand crank, which, uh, yes, this is also an extremely loud process for some reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, temporarily turn my sound down quite a few notches there while I do this. But what you also may notice here is that my hunger will go down very, very quickly while I'm processing the hemp with the hand crank. So that is the unfortunate part is even though I have all this set up, I can't just sit here and process down all 23 of this hemp right now because, well, I'll run out of food and just straight up die. But the benefit here is that one piece of hemp does turn down into four hemp fibers. So I believe that this amount I have here is gonna be almost enough. I probably just need like one, oh, and actually there's one growing now. So maybe just like one or two more of these hemp plants to grow and I should already have enough for all those hemp fibers I need for the windmill. Obviously for now though, I kind of have to wait for my cows to be able to be milked a couple more times so I can stock up on chowder before I waste all of the hunger processing the hemp down. Because I mean, I could go through and eat a bunch of the cooked fish while I process it down, but obviously that'd be a huge waste because the chowder is just more efficient to eat. And I just went through the whole process of getting this cauldron set up to make the chowder in the first place. So I don't know, I'm just not gonna do that. We're gonna take our time processing this hemp down. Anyways though, in the meantime, I do need to work on something and I kind of remember that there are some parts of the original like massive cave I discovered in the first video 
that are probably still a bit unexplored because this place was just huge. Like I definitely have explored more parts of it than I initially did in the last video, but there should still be a lot of new stuff to uncover. So I feel like this area is probably the best for me to be looking around for now to find some more iron and maybe even some new diamonds if I get lucky. And you know what? Now that I have the diamond pick, I can actually go through and break these old blocks that had the iron ore in them that I couldn't before and uncover some more hidden iron just like this. So this area is definitely the best to be looking around, which actually gives me a really good idea. I can go back to where I found those diamonds in the first video and break these blocks. Yes, there we go. Look at that. Some more diamonds hiding behind at least one there. Is it only gonna be, oh, oh not only gonna be one. We've got some more hidden here. Maybe, oh my God, even more? Three extra, any more hiding back here? Come on, give me some more. Doesn't look like it. Looks like it was just a four vein there. That is still insane though. There was just three extra diamonds hiding behind that one this whole time. I could have actually done that at the start of this video already. I just hadn't even like thought about that as a possibility. I then continued caving for a bit and actually even managed to find another diamond while doing so. But eventually I decided that I just didn't want to continue to wait around for my cows to produce more milk for the chowder. And instead I would just process the hemp now and use as much of the cooked fish as I needed to. And so I got to work on grinding down the hemp into fibers. Not a very interesting process as it just involves me sitting here and right clicking this hand crank over and over again. But after eating about 30 plus cooked fish, I had finally done it. There we go, 108 hemp fibers. Definitely pretty taxing on my food supply, but that's all that we need. So hopefully now I can cut back on the amount of food that I'm using pretty significantly. And now the next step is to turn all of these hemp fibers into fabric, just like that. And I now have 12 pieces of fabric, which feels pretty sad for how much work that was. I'm not gonna lie. And it's about to get even more sad because now I need to make 12 uh, wood planks to go along with it and these 12 pieces of fabric get turned into four sails. And that's all we have to show for everything we just did. And then of course I can take these four sails, put them like this and create the windmill. Let's go. Now it may look very small in my hand, but trust me when I get this thing placed down, it will not be very small at all. And so the next morning I set up a wooden platform that would be big enough to fit this thing and got it placed down. Yes, there we go. There is the windmill. Oh my God, wait, let's go get a look from the other side on it. Beautiful, look at that. We are gonna have some power, let's go, all right. And that officially completes my third main goal of this video. But now, of course, in order to make use of the power that this thing is generating, I need to actually connect it to something. And believe it or not, this is finally where that wolf dung is going to come into play because it is the key component that I need to combine with a couple of other things in my cauldron here to produce tanned leather, which is the final item that I needed to be able to craft the saw here that I will be powering with my brand new windmill. And the saw here is the key to an item that I have been waiting so, so long for. As soon as the sun comes up here, I'll hook this thing up and show you guys what I'm talking about. But I am so ready to finally have this item. And then I believe I can just connect the saw like this. Look at that. All right, but now this is the big deal, guys, all right? So first, let me just make a ton of planks here really quickly. But then if I take the planks and put it in front of the saw, it turns them into oak wood siding which is probably not gonna make any sense to you what that is, but trust me, this is huge. Because if I go ahead and just create eight of these oak wood sidings, I can then make my way over to my crafting table here and create a chest. Yes, that is right. We finally have chests. <laughs> After all this time, I don't even know how many hours. This is probably like 40 hours into the mod. I have created a chest. Isn't it beautiful? I'm finally going to be able to get rid of these hampers that only have four spots each and take so long to make. And I have chests with all this storage now and they're so easy to make. It's literally just four oak planks into the saw. Oh my god, this is like, this is the greatest day ever. <laughs> and with that, my final goal for this video was now complete. But there's actually one more huge advancement I'm gonna make before we're done here. First though, I need to finally reveal what the issue with my cow pen was because after I set up my first double chest, I walked over to the cow pen and noticed that once again, my second cow had died. 
And at this point, I had simply had enough of my cows dying. So I hopped onto a creative world and did some testing. And it turns out the problem was actually a very simple one because the zombies can just hit the cows through the fences if they're too close to them. So in order to fix it, all I had to do was add a second layer of fences around the outside and we were good to go. So yeah, if you guessed that in the comments when I first brought it up, which I'm sure a bunch of you did, congrats, you're much smarter than I am. Anyways though, the last thing that I wanna do before I end this video is to craft a torch. Which you're probably thinking that I've already had access to torches since my last video on this mod. But I'm not talking about torches that burn out after 10 minutes. I'm talking permanent torches this time. But I am gonna need one other thing in order to create these permanent torches. And in order to get that thing, I'm gonna have to travel to the single most dangerous place in the entire mod, the nether. Because I need to get some soul sand. The question is though, where exactly am I gonna get some soul sand? Oh, wait. Okay, I see some soul sand over there. I'm not sure, am I able to get over there though? I could grab a bunch of wooden planks and try and make a bridge, but I wonder if a wood bridge is gonna burn in the nether. I kind of feel like it would. Here, you know what? I guess I can do a bit of an experiment. I'll create two wooden planks here. We'll toss one down and let's just see if it starts burning, right? Uh Oh, oh my God. <gasps> Oh my god, I need to get out of here. Okay, well the wooden plank is not burning, so that's a good sign for the experiment. I think I definitely can make a wooden plank bridge. I do not want to fight a gas right now. Like, can I hit this back, please? <gasps> oh, okay. Can I not can I not hit these things back? Oh, okay. I, I I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Let me out, let me out, let me out. Let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out. <gasps> oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, I'm actually so low. I'm on one freaking heart. Please let me out of here. I'm pretty sure I also need to be super careful that I don't cause a gas to hit the pigmen because I think that makes them hate me and try and kill me as well. Which a fight with some pigmen, I can promise you, is not gonna end well for me in my leather armor. All right, I don't see the gas. I think I can make it. I think I can try and get out of here. Come on. All right, we're out, we're out, we're out. Oh, it is nighttime in the overworld here though. Can I make it safely back to my base now too, please? Okay, we're good, we're good. Despite that terrifying experience though, if I wanted to craft an infinite torch, I still needed to find a way to get some soul sand. So I gathered up some wooden planks that I could use for a bridge and made my way back into the nether once again. Please no ghast, please no ghast, please no ghast. I'm so scared. Oh, the nether is so dangerous. Oh my God, there's a ghast literally right next to that soul sand I wanna go to as well. Okay, if I stay to like the far left here, I think it should be okay though. Wait, how am I gonna staircase this down though? I haven't really fully thought this out. I don't even know if it, I mean, I can definitely make, <gasps> oh my God. Did that thing shoot at me? You guys, this is so, oh, it is, it is shooting at me. Okay, maybe, oh no, oh no, oh no, ow. Oh no, now they're pissed at me. And now that, and now that guy's pissed at me. I need to get out, I need to get out. Oh, oh my God. It's in the overworld with me. Jesus, the nether is too dangerous. How am I ever gonna get this soul sand? I think I'm just gonna have to make a tunnel or something. That, that wooden bridge idea was just way too ambitious. I don't think there's any way I'm doing that without having like at least a 60% chance of dying, which at that point, it's just like not worth doing. It's just not worth it, no way. So yeah, obviously that bridging strategy was not gonna work, but I still needed some soul sand. So I made my way back to the nether one last time to try and get some. My plan is to just head back in here and I'm just gonna start tunneling until I hit a new area that I can explore for soul sand because there's just no way I'm gonna be able to do anything else. All right, this is breaking my iron pickaxe like scary fast though. I think I'm gonna convert to just a very skinny tunnel here. I thought I was, oh, all right, here we go. This. This maybe has potential. I can try and go over like this direction here. Man, I did a lot of damage to my pickaxe getting over here though. Are we friendly? Okay, they're not angry at me anymore too, which is good. Go around the fire here. We have some glowstone here. Have I even gotten glowstone yet? I'm not sure if there's anything I could use it for besides just making some glowstone blocks for lighting or something, but anything that can only be found in the nether, I'm assuming is pretty valuable in this mod pack because this place is terrifying. I'm gonna keep placing wooden planks out here so I can kind of have a way to mark where I've been. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay, wait, wait. If that fireball hits a pigment again, we're gonna have a huge problem. Oh, this is not gonna be easy, is it? Come on, please, soul sand somewhere around here. I hear one, that's not good. 
Where is it at? I hear it, but I don't see it. That's like almost- <gasps> Soul sand. Okay, wait. Can I get to that from here? <gasps> I can, I can. Oh my god. Okay, 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 wait. Where's the gas, though? As long as- I'm Oh no, oh no, there it is. Ooh, don't hit a pigman, don't hit a pigman. Oh my god. You know, I do have to say, this mod does make the nether feel a lot more terrifying <laughs> than vanilla Minecraft. I am so scared of these gas. This is a miserable experience. And there's so many of them now. They are everywhere. All right, I'm going for it. I'm going for the soul sand. Just a couple pieces. I, I, I don't know how many pieces I'm going to need. Okay. That's got to be good. I'm running out. I'm, I'm just sprinting. I'm sprinting. It's a huge waste of food, but I just need to get out of here. Leave me alone, please. Oh my god, my hunger is draining so fast, but it's worth it. Oh my god, oh my god, the hunger drains. I can't even sprint anymore. Let me out, let me out, let me out. Here's my wood. I'm just... If I get out without that hitting a pigman, we are blessed. Oh my goodness. We have been blessed. Let me at least get back through my portal before I celebrate. I'm out. I am out. And I got 16 soul sand. Hopefully that is enough. I do not want to have to go back to try and get more of this under any circumstances. Oh my god. And using that soul sand, I was able to make all the ingredients I needed to craft my first infinite torches, which should now allow me to search for diamonds much more efficiently. So maybe I can look into upgrading my armor and tools pretty soon here. Now, obviously this is not the end of the mod. In fact, not only do I still have over a hundred hours of progression to get through, but the next major thing I have to get is a blaze rod. So uh, we're gonna be making a return to the nether, but I haven't uploaded a video in six months. So we're gonna have to get that in part three.